Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on OpenMP implementation in Fortran. Now in this tutorial, uh, as promised, as I promised in the previous tutorial, I thought of giving you guys a, a programming example to show you guys about the master thread. And uh, I'll also explain to you guys an, in an inherent problem that I noticed in this problem, pro program, which I could not find, a f which I could not find an answer to. But I thought I'll show sharing this with you guys so that you guys might figure out what's happening. Okay, now the problems. The problem is like this. Imagine you have a die and you have to throw it, say, a thousand times or a hundred thousand times or something like that. And you want to keep a count of how many times each no each number showed up in all those cases. Well, this program is what it's going to do the exactly the same thing. It's going to uh, using random numbers. It's going to generate a It's going to generate a random a random number between one and six. And update that value every update that value inside the inside the inside the, update the frequencies as you go along with that. Okay. Now the problem has three parts. First part is that first part is actually initializing the well, it's initializing the random number random number sequence. In Fortran, in Fortran, the random number sequences gets generated. Uh, uh, get generated by the something called as this function uh, this subroutine called as random underscore c. The subroutine calls random underscore key, but the problem is every time you compile this, it's going to generate the same set of random numbers, set of random sequences. Hence, the random numbers that you might get will be predictable, predictably be the same. No matter how many times you compile them, no matter how many times you compile them, you'll be getting the same, um, um, the same random series and the same random numbers at the end. So to avoid, avoid that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a little more twisted way. Not a twisted way, just a slightly long hand method of housekeeping. I'm calculating the subroutine. I'm, ca I'm calling the subroutine to find the um, find year, month, and stuff uh, these dates. Okay. I'm, ca I'm calculating this values over here. I'm calling this random seed with a value with an un unassigned value k, unassigned value k, and I'm printing out the value k, and I'm allocating the uh, allocating the seed matrix size of the seed matrix using k. I am initializing all the values of the seed array with the value uh, with the eighth uh, uh, entry of values. With the eighth entry of values being the millisecond, millisecond. Okay, and then I'm I'm then I'm printing on the seed, and then and then I'm calling the random underscore seed fun subroutine with seed with seed uh, sub uh, array as the input. Okay, and which will generate the random number sequence. Since this since the if I run this subroutine I'm going to get I'm going to get these these values the more the interesting thing the most important thing I want is this one this millisecond would be extremely random every time I ran this I ran this program so this is this so this seed matrix which has this value f fixed in will be random every time the program gets compiled and as a consequence but since this seed is used for uh, this seed is used as an initializing the seed is used as an initial array <coughs> input array for this random seed func subroutine. The random number sequence that gets generated every time that the program gets compiled would be entire would be different. As a consequence, the random numbers that random number sequence that gets generated every time would be different during every uh, during compilation would be different every time. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay. With that being said, this is just a uh, that's a housekeeping step for the random number generation, and here I'm just setting the coarse grain parallelism stuff, just like uh, just like previously. I'm, so I'm starting a parallel block and I'm sharing uh, sharing dice, PPT, and some over here. I'm keeping i i star i and num thread and random value and indices over here. I'm keeping them private. <coughs> okay, these are just regular coarse grain parallelism stuff. Then this is the main bar, main plot of it. I'm calling the subroutine random val and I'm assigning that random value to this function to this variable rand val. Now this random value will be a ra the fu function this value uh, variable random value will have a random number between zero and uh, slightly less than one, something like 0.999 something like that, but slightly less than one. Okay, so it will not be one. So it will be between zero and something less than one. Okay, now this function. Now what I'm doing here is that I'm multiplying this value by six and I'm flooring this value and adding one to it, and as I and keeping that value inside index, in this variable index. So what happens here is that since this val random value be is by lies between zero and slightly less than one, if you multiply this six, six it will be it will be it will range between zero and slightly less than six. So while while flooring this, the the decimal part of the numbers would be chopped off, so it will be between zero and five. 
adding 1 to it, it will be between 0 and 6. So this index would be between 0 and 6. So this index is a direct indication. This is this index, the value of this index is going to tell me which which number popped up on the die. Simple enough. Okay. Excuse me. And now what I'm doing here is that whenever that particular number popped up, I'm going to update the frequency of that number by one in this thing. Suppose if six popped up, the dice of six, dice of six, meaning the uh, meaning the freq the dice uh, array which has which update keeps up updates the values of uh, num values of the numbers. Okay, will be updated by one. So if six popped up, the dice of six would be updated by one. If one four popped up, the dice of four would be updated by one. So on and so forth, like that. Okay, since I done do this uh, run this in a do loop, this do loop will be executed uh, for execu executed for uh, the number of throws, number of throws, <laughs> and that's it. And another alternate way for do for this function is this in in the the index equals uh, ceiling of rand value times six. This is an alternate answer because here when I do this. The numbers which will be slight, which will be between zero and uh, five and something, will be upgraded, to, will be rounded up to be rounded up to one to six. So this is an alternate way of doing this. Okay, I've done this so far, so good. The problem actually comes with this. When I start the master block over here, okay, and I've got sum up all the dice and dices that I uh, dice and dices and stuff, okay. Okay, dice and dices and I print this out okay I'm starting an if block over here I'm just summing up all the dice and the dice frequency that I get all, logically speaking the sum of all the frequencies over here should be equal to the throws isn't it it should be equal to, uh, equal to the throws but that's not what I'm getting over here that is not what I'm getting over here okay uh, it's, uh, it should be equal to the throws, and if it's throw, if it's equal, let's say, it's going to print the throws. It's going to print the sum, stating the throws are closed, and then it's going to print the no each number, how many times each number apply uh, appeared in doing this during this random throwing experiment, and then the fraction, how many times, uh, how what fraction, what fraction of this number, uh, what is the fraction of this number appearing in the total number of throws and stuff. When this is not equal, when this sum is not equal to throws, I'm going to print throws, and then I'm just saying the sum throws are not close and stuff. So if I compile this serially and run this, this is k, uh, the value that was used for in, 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 in finding the size of uh, seed, and I mean this is the seed value and stuff, and this is the throws, and the throws are closed and stuff. It says when I run the serially, it's fine. It's fine. The turning order be fine. The values are close to 16.67 percent. Uh, since the number of throws are uh, kind of small, there may be there may be a lot of, uh, nice there may be a big deviation from the theoretical answer. But trust me, if you have a larger number, it's turned out to be fine. Now here's the thing: if I run this parallelly, let's say, okay, sometimes the throws are closed like this, like this. Sometimes the throws are closed, and sometimes the throws are not closed. Okay, I have no idea why. Sometimes the throws are closed, sometimes the throws are not closed. And if the number of throws just increases to a large value, let's say, large value, let's say, now, almost, almost all the time, the throws are not at all closed. But, it, but during some miraculous, uh, I would say, some in one, one in a several, one, one but it, with, with, the, with the slight probability, some of these runs would have the close with the, will have a close throws. Almost all of them are not close, but some of them once in a while you might get a close throw. And you can and you see the sum, the sum just varies quite a lot between the throws and stuff. Okay. Now, I thought okay maybe there's a problem here. Let me just take the barrier off. Now obviously if you look at this problem, if you just take the barrier off, barrier off. This is def this is definitely going to be a problem because if you take the barrier off, the numbers would be off by a big shot because as and when the master as and when thread zero finished uh, finish the parallel block on the top, it's going to finish the master block and stuff. So this is definitely wrong. So this is, uh, this is definitely wrong. So it's obvious now this ba barrier block has to be there. Has to be there. Okay. The thing I noticed is that suppose if I print this statement. So there is something wrong. 
Although everything looks fine, there is something wrong which I cannot figure it out. I'm not sure where it is. Suppose if I let the print statement down, let's say. This print statement where I print the i and the corresponding index that I get. Run this. It's going to print all of them. It's going to take some time. It's going to print all of them. And if I looked at these indices, <laughs> indices are generated. None of the, all these indices values are between one and six. Are between strictly between one and six. So that uh, error. So there isn't any error. Okay. The master block in the throws are actually closed. Even if you take a, even if you take a very large number, it doesn't matter. The throws would be would be closed. And if suppose if you take a small number, let's say thousand. Even then, the thread it will be closed. The threads would be closed even then. So this is the thing. Suppose if uh, if I add this print statement, add this print statement, the program is getting closed. If it, if I remove this print statement, the program is not getting closed. There must be some. I, I I'm pretty sure I'm missing out something over here, but I'm just uh, clearly don't know where the problem is. So if you when uh, what I request, recommend you guys is that just play with this program. Because just play with this program. This is actually a good example too. And uh, if you guys find out any issue, just get, let me know. Let me know under the comments as to what could be the alternate way to figure this out. Okay. And that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, the next tutorial I'll come up with another interesting topic. Okay. Thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time.